Hi, Dad. What game are we hey, playing man. today? We are playing Power Grid. Power Grid. Do you oh, like yeah. Power Grid? I love Power Grid. This is one of my favorite games. Um, and when I heard about this years ago, I could tell just by hearing what it was about that this was going to be a game I liked. I bought it, and I love it. Uh, the problem has been, it's a couple hour game, is finding people that are going to play it with me. But when I do, oh, I just eat it up. Just because there's so many different things to think about. It's pure strategy game. No dice rolling, no worry about luck. It's completely watching your opponents. So many facets to be thinking about all the time. I love it. All right, well, what's the objective? The objective in Power Grid is, as you can see here, we've got the map of the U.S., on the back side, we've got the Germany map, but the objective is to get some cities out here and essentially being able to power up your cities with power plants that you have purchased along the way. And, and the person that can power up the most cities at the end of the game wins. And it doesn't mean you've got to have the most cities out there. You have to be able to power them on that last turn as well, which mm. involves all the resources. So there's just so much to it, but I think the best way... I'm not going to go into details on this one because there's so many different uh, facets of each step, but I will give a quick overview of what, they're, what they are. And this, as you can see, as our always, handy dandy card. We love this. Our handy dandy turn summary. So, for example, you can see here, I'll show a lot of different facets of it. Over here, we have on this side is the turn order, which has a big impact. So, depending on who goes first or who goes last, Different facets of the game depend on that. So you want to keep an eye on who's going to get to go first because they're going to have some benefits. Who goes last, they're going to have some other benefits. That's all determined over by here on how many cities you're powering up. So if I've got four cities out here, I'm going to be over on four. Somebody else may have five cities. Another person may be up to only three cities. And they're up to four cities with me, for example. So he's going to have first in turn order. I'm going to have second in turn order, and then he will go, and then Red would go if we were doing a four-player game. Number two is buying the power plants. The best begins. What it means is whoever's in first place gets to go first, and this is our power plant auction. Look at that. So that's really the first thing you do, and you can see different type of power plants. It tells you different resources needed to power them up. It tells you how many cities they power when they're turned on which is fantastic. So you're going to first auction these off. The person who gets to go first picks up of the current four market which one they want to bid on. And these are done by auction, so people can choose how much they want to spend on them. He may offer this one up for bid. And he will start at number five. And then if the next person wants to bid a higher at six or seven, they bid, and it keeps going around until someone has purchased this. And then you've got your Monopoly money over here yeah, to play with, right? Exactly. So you've got all this that you can purchase with. So say I bought that, then the next thing comes up is ooh, a number 13. Well, all of these shift down, and that goes into the futures market, and it keeps going along so the way. So the only ones you can auction from are that top row. That top row, right. But as things get purchased, so maybe this one gets purchased next by a player, next thing that comes up is a 12. Well, that's going to fit right in here. Oh. You know, it may, and it'll just keep shifting around. So other other beneficial ones are going to come out. Take a look at some of these. So the ones that come out are always going to be numerical. Yeah. Organized. And then they're going to get an order. So for example, some of these higher ones, this will power up seven houses. As Goodness. you can see, it's similar to this one that can power two. So over time, you are only going to be able to keep, like if I had these as my power plants, I can only keep three at a time. So if I do purchase this one later, I'm going to have to get rid of one of these. You know, so maybe I'll get rid of this one, and that one's out of the game. So I'm going to continue to auction these off. There's all sorts of rules about how that gets done, and you can bid up as high as you want, how those all shift into play, but it's cool. you got to be watching the auction, and you got to know what type of power plants, what type of resources, when is a good trade going to happen, because, again, at the end, you're going to want to be able to power the most cities. So if I have cards like this, the most at the end of the game I would be able to power is nine cities. That's not going to win me the game. So I know I've got to plan ahead. All right. I love it. Well, let's see how okay. you get cities out there then. Exactly. Well, you're stepping ahead even there. The third phase of the game is to buy resources. So look oh. down here at the resources. And this tells you how much it costs to buy a resource. My power plant can burn 
For example, this one can burn coal. Two you, coal powers one. Yeah, power one city. Or if I moved up, I can have coal or oil. So I can buy those resources. There's others that have garbage. There's other uranium. And some are wind power. Ooh. So you don't have to buy any resources. So it's pretty cool. But then I'm going to pay for as many as it costs. So if I want to buy four of these, it'll cost me one for each of these resources. And then two for that one. So I'll spend that money to buy all of these resources. But chances are, I'm going to want to buy more to be able to power up. This one's actually going in reverse order. So oh, the person so that's a resource buying goes in reverse yeah. order to last to first. Yeah, so if you want to be buying resources cheaper, you're going to not build out your cities as much because then you can buy cheaper because little do you know, this is going to be bought up. And then the first and person will have to pay more expensive yeah, prices. It's going to cost that. At the end of each turn, those are going to resupply, but they don't resupply very quickly. Anyway, pretty cool with buying resources. That's All what right. I love. Um, then you're going to build cities. Now we get to build houses. Yeah. My favorite. Yeah, exactly. So, for example, if I wanted to build into Fargo, I first have to go from where I'm connected. It's going to cost me 10 to build there, plus I have to pay a connection fee. So it would cost me 16 to put a plant there. If I wanted to build over into Billings, it's going to cost me 10 plus 17, so another 27 to connect over to Billings. So that's how you build out your network. I can't just jump somewhere else and say I want to build in Santa Fe. But there can be three houses per city. Yes. At different steps of the game, you're going to build into it. So after you hit a certain stage in the game, then somebody can build a second. For 15. Right. I can't build two in the same city. But other people can then come into the game. And then third step. So they will start to intermix, but it's going to take till somebody builds their seventh city. Then you can start putting two in, a per, in each city. The other thing I should note is depending on how many players of the game, you're going to play in different areas of the map. So you can That's see these color colored. backgrounds. So if you've got four players, you just pick four sections. So like we may pick these four sections to play in. And then in you just ignore the West Coast. Yeah. Or we could pick these four and you ignore the East Coast. Those type of things. Um, anyway, so that's how you build out and you pay for all of the houses that go into there. Then the last thing is you fire up your power plant. You power them. You burn your resources. Yeah, exactly. So, for example, now I take money. On the back of the turn card, this tells me, depending on how many cities I want to power up, how much money I'm going to make. So awesome. if, I have, if I've got this, I've got six cities out there, six cities would give me 73 well, if you, electro. If you powered If I six. power them up. So to power them up, I've got the ability to power nine. I have to power all or nothing. So, for example, I will use this one. I can burn these three coal. That powers seven cities. And that powers seven cities. I don't I can't power just part of it to get parts of it. You have to burn all three to power up seven cities. But you don't have to use all of your plants. Exactly. So I've got one stored for next time. I'm gonna have to be buying some resources to fire it up. And then I just don't even fire those up. And then then you you do it again. So then you take a look and you say, okay, now who's got most cities? You readjust your turn order. order. And then you go at it again. And so it's a complete balanced game of all those different facets of watching the resource market, watching where you want to build your network, where other people are building their network, how fast they're coming out, what power plants come up that you're going to want to bid on, how much you're willing to pay for those power plants because you're going to need those of that resource type. It's complete thinking for a couple of hours. So at the end of the game, I don't even realize the time has gone by because I've just been thinking and concentrating the whole time and... I simply love it. Now, I will add that this is not mom's type of game. I don't think she would have any interest in it. She would take a look at it and just say, sorry, that is not my style. So it's not for everybody. Well, you know, that's what she said with Seven Wonders. Yeah, that one's uh, quite different. (laughs) Uh, But this this one is one, if you just want a strategy game, this is completely where it's at. And we've even got... The expansion. Additional maps. So, for example, they've got a bunch of different maps. I'll just show you one of these out here. There are other things that can be done. So for example, here's the China-Korea map, which has different, as you can see, you know, different markets. Here you've only got two coal, one oil. So your resource market plays out differently. Um, on the back side of this one is China. So you can flip around. The same type of thing, and each map comes with a little bit different rules on how the resources work, how it supplies. Um, the supply and demand. So there's different things to think of, but it's it's just complete thinking the whole time. 
And we have a few other maps that we bought for it too, plus another uh, expansion, one that I think was pretty cool that they came up with. And, the robot and it, expansion. And it, this one's for me, so it's robots. So the issue I had before about not having enough people to play it with, so for example, Trevor, if I want to play with you, it's just two of us, there's different dynamics, but we can get the robots, and what robots do are they're like uh, artificial intelligence. They get set up and they are a player in the game and it's prescribed what they do at each step of the game. And you randomly set up a robot and he takes over a third player or a fourth player. And so that's the way we can add in additional elements and still play with just a couple players and still get some dynamics for, for the game and being able to watch what they're doing. So I remember when we played that at like one in the morning and we were laughing really hard because it kept buying all the crappy power plants. <laughs> yeah, sometimes those robot rules, but that's another thing you've got to think about is, okay, watch what he's doing, what he's about to do, uh, and then play it out. This is one of those games that I just, I just love it. Eat it up. Um, All right, well, what would what you rate it? Say. Uh, well, this one's a five on my book. So five. I love it. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. All right, well, thanks, Dad. You bet. I'll see you later.